It's a family affair in the kitchen with author Cheryl Tan and her mother Cynthia inviting Razor TV into their aunt's kitchen as they cook Kong Bak Pao, one of Cynthia's specialties. We leave the cooking in the expert hands of Cheryl's mom as we steal her away to talk about her book, A Tiger in the Kitchen. Released early this year, the book is how Cheryl reconnects with her culture and family through cooking lessons with her various family members. The first thing that, that really struck me was, was is, is, is A, very personal? Yes. It's extremely personal. Yes. Um, and there was a lot of focus on, on especially your, your mom and your, and your dad. Yeah. Very much so your dad for the first beginning yeah. chapters, right? So I just want to ask, like, uh, was it hard actually even beginning to, to write a book like this? Because I know you, you were food blogging and then when you take a leap into something which is so personal, uh, was there any reservations? Yeah, well, um, you know, for me, the, the, the blog and the book kind of happened at the same time. It was all very organic. Um, and I'm also very personal on the blog. Whenever I like to tell the story behind a dish. You know, like if I'm sharing uh, my mother's kombat pao recipe, for example, um, I want to share the story behind the recipe and like how we used to eat it, how my mom used to make it. So it's always been very personal for me. Um, in this book, however, you know, it's like to tell the stories of, um, of the dishes that my family makes. I, I sort of went back into family history and, and talked about the origins of, you know, um, these, the dishes as well as you know my things that my family had gone through um, you know which really explain the dishes a lot more um, for example one of the dishes that um, that I love in the book is uh, my late grandmother's gambling rice and uh, it was a dish that she called uh, because uh, you know she at some point used to run an illegal gambling den in her home because yeah. she was so poor and uh, but she was a really good cook but she also you know was very smart so she wanted to uh, feed the gamblers so they didn't get hungry and leave so she started to cook for them so this like very easy rice dish it's basically like cabbage and, and pork belly and shallots and everything all fried together and um, the gamblers can hold the bowl in one hand and keep gambling with the other so there were all these revelations that you found out from from actually learning how to cook uh, yeah. were, you, were you surprised were you taken aback uh, I mean yeah it was interesting but I mean were you quite yeah. shocked yeah it's funny because when I when I told my friends in the US that I was starting to work on this book and I was going to research my family history and they were like wow it's gonna be this very dramatic thing I'm like no my family is not that crazy but you know when you spend time in the kitchen and you're waiting an hour for something to steam you know people will tell you the story is about your grandfather that you never really knew. Like I found out my great grandfather was this opium addict, which I didn't know. And he used to send my auntie, who was a you know when she was a very young girl, to be his opium courier to go and pick up his opium. Because who would suspect a little girl? So those stories like that, um, you know, multiple wives, uh, you know, that kind of like sort of very sad family history. All of that really came out. Did it come naturally to, uh, though, during, during the cooking sessions, did it come naturally for, for your family just to review all this stuff or did it take a while? Well, a lot of it was me sort of being inquisitive about it and, you know, sitting them down and like asking them questions. I really wanted to take this year to, to learn a lot about my family, things that I had never really known before and in a more intimate and a much deeper way than I'd ever really been exposed to them. So, um, I really wanted to ask, okay, what, well, no, but really, what was Gong Gong like? Or, you know, no, really, like, what, was, what was life in Singapore at this certain time like? Um, because I wanted to tell the story of a family and a certain time in, a, in Singapore um, that could really show what the country was like in a very intimate way for you know people who hopefully will be reading it 100 years from now you know in the US or Canada or wherever or here. Up next, Cheryl talks about making the switch from fashion writing to food. 